Complaints have been coming in from the province of Saskatchewan, and these complaints have been laid by farmers who say that agents belonging to Trudeau's government trust us on their farmlands in their quest for nitrogen. The farmers say that these federal agents turn up in clearly marked Government of Canada vehicles and enter their farmlands to test nitrogen content. No plea to the farmers to allow them to test for nitrogen on their lands, they just walk in there. This has infuriated Saskatchewan Minister Jeremy Cockrell, who has seen most, if not all, of these complaints so much that he has given public notice to what was happening in Saskatchewan. In a letter that he posted along with a caption on Twitter, he appeared to threaten Trudeau's federal agents when he claimed were unlawfully trespassing on private lands. The farmers had stated that the federal agents didn't see a need to ask them for permission before waltzing into their lands with their equipment. Cockerdell also mentioned that what Trudeau's agents were doing was a clear transgression of the Saskatchewan Trespass to Property Act. And breaking the rules of the act could cause the defaulting individuals involved to part with up to $200,000 and give up six months of their freedom locked up in prison. With the public letter, the Saskatchewan government is making it clear to Trudeau's government that they were not welcome to test for nitrogen or any other gas on private lands, not without permission from the landowners. This is another showing from the Saskatchewan government that they do not conform to Trudeau's policy targeting farmers in the country. As one of the prairie provinces in the country, Saskatchewan farmers grow a large percentage of what the country eats. But with Trudeau's policy, they fear that their farms and yields would be greatly affected if the prime minister is allowed to have his way. Hence, all three premiers of the prairie provinces came out to jointly condemn Trudeau's policy. But with what is happening in Saskatchewan at the moment, it seems like Trudeau didn't care much for what they had to say and has, instead, gone ahead to follow through with his plan. It is commendable that the Saskatchewan government didn't succumb to pressure or fear of injuring the federal government with its opposing view on the matter. If we could have more politicians like those in the Prairie Provinces who know what is right and won't stand for wrong to prevail, I guess we would be better equipped to deal with this horrible liberal government that we have been saddled with. Trudeau irked farmers across the country when he came on to say that fertilizers were a threat to the climate as they produced a large number of greenhouse gases that harmed the climate. This was a new trend in his carbon policy, which he must have unsurprisingly copied from his fellow puppet and Dutch Prime Minister, Mark Rutte. We all know that story of what went on between the Dutch Prime Minister and the Dutch farmers when Rutte said that he planned to cut down on ammonia and nitrogen oxide that the farmlands were producing, according to him. Of course, I fear that Trudeau would do the same because, besides the fact that the two politicians are puppets of Schwab, they seem to be good friends too, as photos of them hanging out appeared some time ago. That was when Trudeau was pushing a mask mandate that he broke time and again, even on those times out with Ruta. And Trudeau confirmed my fears when he said almost the exact same thing about farmers. The days pass by and Trudeau keeps giving the good people of Canada more reasons to hate him and view him as a dictator. I mean, what kind of leader in a democratic setting would let his employees invade the properties belonging to private individuals without informing them beforehand or better still seeking their permission? There have been many incidents across the world where supposed leaders used this same means on the city zens of the countries they ruled, and guess what? All of them were unapologetic dictators. How would law and order, for instance, thrive in a society where the head of government continually breaks or disrespects rules? Obviously, Trudeau didn't learn from the reduced number of votes he got in the last elections that forced him into a coalition with Jagmeet Singh of the NDP, another politician who cares only about himself. Because if he had did, he would have been humble enough to tread cautiously and not be so high-handed, but then, humility is a huge ask from Trudeau, and he is probably satisfied with his political career and isn't looking to run again in 2025, hence he is choosing to do as he pleases without caring for the party's image, which he is seriously damaging in the process. That's what you get with a man who is only about himself. Saskatchewan Premier Scott Moe also demanded an answer from Trudeau concerning the invasion of farmers' properties by his federal agents. But as is normal with Trudeau's government, no one from there has said a world of explanation. Food prices are plummeting, leaving a lot of Canadians hungry and under. But Trudeau sees all these and chooses to go ahead with his stupid plan of cutting down on fertilizer use just to please some man at the WEF. What kind of leader sacrifices the lives and comfort of the people he leaves just to be in the good books of some foreigner? Truly, how did we get here as Canadians? Watching Poi Lee of talk about this on YouTube, I couldn't help but wonder why Trudeau is the man in 24 Sussex Drive instead. Oh, Justin, you're awake. You made it. Have a seat. Have a coffee. You need some. Wakey, wakey time. Thanks very much for taking my invitation to have a little breakfast. I know you're just back from your vacation in Costa Rica. And there's a few things you might not have noticed while you were gone starting with the price of coffee, it's up 14% in one year. 
Not just coffee, Justin. Bacon is up 8%. Milk to put in your coffee, it's up 7%. Bread, bread's up 15%. And the butter on the bread, that's up 17%, Justin. Eggs, up 16%. So, the average Canadian can't even dream of going on a vacation right now to Costa Rica. They're just dreaming about, well, affording food. In fact, there's a poll out, Justin, you might find interesting. About a quarter of Canadians are now borrowing money just for essentials like eating. Justin, can you imagine taking out a loan so that you can eat? Remember when you said that you were borrowing money so that Canadians didn't have to? Well, now Canadians are borrowing up a storm because they can't afford the higher prices that you've, imp you've imposed on them, right? You know, it's called inflation or just inflation. I like to put your name in there because it gets your attention. Here's how it happens. You print money to pay for your deficits, $400 billion. You increase the money supply in our economy by about 20% in two years. More money chasing fewer goods, that equals higher prices. Let me break it down for you. Imagine there's an economy with 10, lo 10 pieces of bread and $10. Well, it would be $1 for each piece of bread. And if you double the number of dollars, Justin, to 20, you don't get twice as rich. It's just that $20 to buy 10 pieces of bread is now $2 for each piece. In other words, you've doubled the price by doubling the money. Well, that's what happens when you create cash without creating the stuff that cash buys. So, we have 10% food price inflation in Canada today. 10%. And overall, our inflation rate is near a 40-year high. So what are your plans to do about it? Well, you want to further increase the carbon tax by 200%. Justin, gas prices have been hovering near all-time highs already. And you want to continue running these monster deficits that will bid up the price of goods. And finally, you want to make food more expensive by forcing farmers to cut back on the fertilizer that they use to make our food by 30%. Now, I want you to stop and think, how does it help the environment? If you force farmers to reduce their food production for every acre of land, they're going to have to use a bigger footprint of land to make the same amount of food, which forces them, of course, to drive longer distances in those big tractors and combines and burn more fuel. Beyond that, because they would not be competitive with global food prices, we'd have to import more food. And that food would have to be transported by ship, train, and truck, all burning fuel as well. And by the way, Justin, didn't you notice during COVID, how reckless it was for us to depend on the rest of the world for our, for our essentials. Shouldn't we be producing our own food here? We have among the most abundant supply of farmland of any country on planet Earth. And you want us to import more fuel, feud, fuel, excuse me. It's so crazy, I can't even say it. You want us to import more food from other countries with poorer environmental standards, Justin, it doesn't make sense. That's why I invited you here. I wanted to get your head back in the game here. So this is what I'm proposing. Why don't you cancel the attack on our farmers, get rid of this fertilizer mandate, ax the carbon tax so that they can produce our food more affordably, and we can repatriate more of our food and other production back to this country, rather than sending our jobs and production to faraway polluting lands. Why don't you stop printing money to pay your bills by bringing in a pay-as-you-go law that requires government find a dollar of savings for every new dollar of spending? That way, you won't have to put all this inflationary cash into the economy. And I know that's hard. You have to be disciplined to find savings, Justin. But maybe um, we should replace you with a single mom who knows how to run a budget. Because right now, Justin, single moms are able to run budgets better than you do. And fortunately, lately they've been doing that by making a lot of sacrifices that you've imposed on them. And there are single moms who are literally cutting back on their kids' diets, putting water in their kids' milk because they can't afford the 10% year-over-year food inflation that you have imposed on them. So why don't you listen to my common sense ideas? Let's tackle inflation, make paychecks go further, 
stop creating cash and start creating more of what cash buys. In other words, Justin, wake up and smell the coffee. What do you think about the video? Please leave your comments in the comments section down below. We would love to hear your thoughts. Also, please do leave us a like on this video. Subscribe if you are new or you haven't yet and turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on any of our videos moving forward. We encourage you to share them too so the truth can get to more people. Thanks for staying with us and I will see you in the next one.